Hey, this is Jay Zoo Garcia, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another interview. Today is with Jesu Garcia. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, Roger. Glad to have you on the show. And what's the name of the show? Sl Slasher, Slasher Pepper. Slasher Pepper. Yeah. And give me the give me the reasons. What's the acronym? <laughs> um, it, it's it's basically two words. So slasher comes from I mean obviously slasher movies, and then uh, Pepper comes from Dr Pepper because as a kid I was addicted to that stuff. So. <laughs> so did you? So did, did you like um, my favorite actor? That was the Dr Pepper commercial guy, and then he became uh, David American. Norton. David, yeah. Yep. I love I love that guy, man. He was he was the the American werewolf in Paris. <laughs> I think that's what it was called, right? No, that that's the that's the sequel. What was it? The American. The, the original was in London. Oh, sorry, London. It's London. I thought I thought you were joking for a second. No, there. no, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> right. It, 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 his name was what? David. David Nodden. David Nodden, man, that, and that was a, a cutting edge effects. You know, stay right. Up. Right, be a pepper, drink Dr. Pepper or whatever it was. Now it's all, now it's all CGI or something. Or... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, anyways, my first question was, uh, you know, 2022 has been going for two months now. Um, so what's been keeping you busy? Traveling. I love traveling. I went to South America after two years of everyone being locked down and the whole thing. So I actually in July, I went to last year uh holland or the netherlands opened up july 1st i arrived nice and, and then there was all these weird closing and opening and closing uh so europe was great and then i went to south america got back it's summer there so i went to argentina and colombia and i just i quit the movie business so i do a lot of speaking engagements and, and supporting my church and my community with you know, getting together. Hey, how are you? Kind of thing. Uh, I'm not a Zoomer, but in this case, it's important to Zoom because yeah, you're over there and I'm over here. Right. But if I ever go to Holland, then let's talk and then record it for real. Yes, that would be awesome. Let's do it. I'm all, I'm also like a technology guy. You know, I love Zoom, but it's not that great quality. You know. Yeah, real life is certainly better. Yeah. And uh, like, what's your favorite part about traveling? Uh, business class in a bed. I love, <laughs> I love planes. So uh, I love the 777s, the 777s. I don't know if you know these. I uh, don't. So my favorite airline is KLM. I'm not kidding you. So oh, KLM, seriously? <laughs> yeah, so KLM has this beautiful blue color. I love, yeah. that. I love that color. I think I think they use the same color in Air Force One, you know, and um, could be. I'm not sure. So the Dutch airlines are amazing. And uh, when I was going over there, maybe a few years ago, it was a hundredth year anniversary. Oh, really? So, so you get the Dutch. Do I, I wonder if I've got the Dutch houses. You get these little houses with liquor in it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so I love uh business i love um i love lounges the the vip lounges i love the whole airport one of my favorite airport is the the shipple shipple yes <clears throat> and i'm not kidding you because it's a seven minute uh train ride to the south station yeah so i can't i don't know how to say it in dutch <laughs> But it's the it's seven minutes from the airport after you get your luggage to the South Station. You cross the street and stay at the hotel right there. Yep. And it's probably the best, you know, airport to hotel experience. So that, <laughs> you know, I, I like that. You asked me what I like. I like finding things that make travel exciting. Right. And, nice. Um, and so you're, and also the the young crowd consciousness in the netherlands uh, the the hotels are kind of interesting they're they're geared for there's a thing called holacracy in some of these hotels which is um so you have little kind of like box cubic rooms 
cubic rooms and then there's mm -hmm. com community gatherings in the lobby with different booths for meetings that you can have in the center there's a bar and then in the kitchens in the back so you can you know community and the tables are shared it's kind of cool that's awesome I, I stay in hotels like that so that that makes it fun than being isolated in a room and you know room service i don't yeah. i kind of like this new kind of it's like work you know we work communities you know yeah cubicle before covid there was this cubicle yeah everyone works together now everyone's wearing a mask and they're running away from people oh. yep stay out of my zone <laughs> so yeah it's funny you mentioned like this seven minute uh gap because um well like i mentioned before the call um i live a bit southern from uh, amsterdam yeah but a friend of mine a really good friend of mine i visit pretty often lives right above amsterdam so i take that train all the time <laughs> did you but, say it's you live by the hague yes yeah yeah did you ever I, visit that place i i only went down to rotterdam oh that's where my school's at so yeah. i'm there pretty often too i took the bullet train you guys have a speed train that goes to rotterdam yeah. i actually yeah. When during COVID, I based myself in Amsterdam and took trains, the Eurostar, to England. Oh, nice. Them at the central station. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of security. So I thought the train was better, but I like trains. You can sit there and work. Right. And you're in, in three hours, you're in London. It's just yeah, crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, I really want to take that one one day. I like I see it standing yeah, all the time, but I've never. You'll love it. You'll love it. It's like you, you. Okay, so it takes seven minutes to the airport, but then you got to go two hours before, and then you board the plane an hour flight, right. and then you have to take a train or a taxi to Central London. This train leaves you right in the heart of London. So oh, that's amazing. Take a taxi. And you're in your you're in your hotel, or it's you're way in, more convenient. Very convenient. You're not at the airport. You land right in, uh, uh, Saint. Uh, it's called Saint Pancras, Saint Pancras hotel, uh, train station. And uh, you know, I mean, I like Europe like that. You know, very very. Uh, that's what I love about it. You ask me what I love about it. Nice, awesome. Um, and uh well to go back to an arm on street you could have seen it coming um what's the first thing that comes to mind when you look back at the days of filming the movie um you know i i uh i'm gonna put a little light here oh yeah look at this there we go um can you see a little light yes <laughs> i got these little oh uh, nice uh nightmare on elm street is uh what i think about it is just the fans they just keep coming um there's no like you're how old are you i'm uh 18 so you're 18 so that blows me away i'm 58 yeah so i saw there was i don't know there was teenagers you're you're nine you said eight 19 18 18 yeah okay, 18. so you're like a teen and then i'll see kids in strollers with their parents forcing them to meet me and sign autographs i did that in pensacola I did a convention. Awesome. So, um, but it wasn't a horror convention. It was more of a, like a, a con. So you get a, an occasional horror fan. Right. When I, do, when I do the horror fan, it's real, you know, full on. They love the horror, you know, guys. And, uh, but what I think about is Freddy Krueger. Uh, although I didn't, really work much with him except when he kills me right uh, <laughs> yeah. so I, I i when i what i think about is johnny depp me heather and amanda and our scenes together which is sort of the setup for nightmare on elm street you know we're in school and we're teasing and and you know i'm a young guy you know sexual and want to get all over tina <laughs> and uh, amanda's like She's such a sweet person and a good, uh, a good lady. And, uh, the, you know, I've grown, I've grown to know them, but from a distance, but, uh, you know, so we're kind of like, we're kind of like part of a band that broke up and, and occasionally fans remind us of our hit songs. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so we're so when we talk about when we talk about each other, it's for me, it's heartwarming and reminding me of the of those days and uh, when we rocked it, you know. But but the movie, but the band and the music continues to be popular, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving, just just uh, kind of like on a basic level it pays for my you know it 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 supports me financially so you know people that sign autographs and come to sometimes 400 i don't know what kilometers are but 400 miles maybe they they drive maybe they fly some people fly from the from europe to 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 get my autograph or they're collectors and uh you know, the devotion of a fan is makes you humble. And you're like, that's what I think about lately. When I, right. when I, I remember I've done 71 projects. Yeah. So no, I left Nightmare on Elm Street in the dust. But, but the only film that keeps coming after me is Nightmare on Elm Street with fans. Right. Hey, you want to, you want to uh, sit down and sign some autographs? Sure. No one else is asking me for autographs. Right. <laughs> so no one else, you know, no one else pays me or uh, I get some residuals. And I retired about 10 years ago. So I'm, uh, I'm just impressed by, you know, and, and most of us are still alive. Wes passed away a few years ago. So, you know, that's the other thing, you know, it's uh, collectors are, are hungry to get the the posters done and get i hope to, uh, i'm a very rare person to sign because i don't go to a lot of conventions johnny depp's even more rare so i hope for johnny i hope he can sign quite a bit for a lot of the collectors because uh, what i when i sign the autographs in the posters he's not on there <laughs> right <laughs> uh, about, robert, I mean... robert signs a lot robert's robert oh yeah yeah, and I bet most people would ask Johnny to sign like a Pirates of the Caribbean poster or something. Oh, well, the good thing about Johnny is that he has tons of movies that he can autograph. Yeah. I don't have, but really, uh, I just came from Pensacola. So people were, I was uh, signing on uh, Wildcats, Gotcha, and A Lot of Nightmare. So I, I have a few. I did Along Came Polly. No, people don't really sign you know it, you have to have to me it, it seems like as time goes by the 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 film has more of a of a memorabilia to it you know but, but nightmare on elm street is a classic no doubt oh yeah for sure and uh well since you love traveling you should um try getting to uh weekend of hell sometime it's like just in germany but it's just over the border from the netherlands yeah. Um, but that's like a whole horror convention. Uh, it's in Germany. Yeah. I'd love to go to that. Represent me. Get me over. Yes. I'll, I'll have to do a call out here. So everyone <laughs> message week in the go spam their emails. Let's yeah, get, get uh, me, Jason get, in Germany. Get me. Cause I love going to Europe. So get me right. over. I did a German one. Uh, and it was these guys that used to do it together and they broke up and they, the breakup, uh, you know, was not stable, so the the horror convention didn't do so well. But uh, I I know in the UK they do stuff. So oh yeah, yeah. I'd love to. Yeah, but you know, uh, make me famous, Roger. Make me famous. <laughs> Hopefully, I was you in, get out I, here. the funny the funny thing about it is I go to Russia, you know, and lots of God bless Russia and Ukraine right now and whatever's going on. Yeah. I'm not taking sides, so it's it's a tough it's a tough thing. So, I have friends in both countries. So, um, more I'm more into like peace. So I hope something works out. Me too. Uh, the um, the what I was going to say is I was in Moscow, and I I uh, Instagrammed. I swear to God, these fans found me and ambushed me outside my hotel <laughs> and I, Insta I instagram places i was at right and they, they were following me and they 
they got me, ambushed me right outside. I was like, what's going on here? I, I don't think I've ever felt like a movie star kind of feeling where someone's stalking me and, <laughs> and they got me, you know, like usually that's like a Johnny Depp thing. They're outside. Right. Of <laughs> These guys were hardcore Russian Nightmare on Elm Street fans and, and some of my other films. And they had, they had me sign the VHS. And That's awesome. These guys were amazing, you know, these Moscow kids. And they were young. They were like in their 20s. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd love to go to Europe because I know the titles are different. So I know the films are there. Oh, yeah. They certainly yeah. are. I, I'm definitely being, um, what is it called? Dubbed. It's definitely a Russian actor doing me. <laughs> Here in Holland, we uh, we usually just have subtitles. <laughs> subtitles, because you can you understand a little English. Yeah, yeah. I I got English really early, and I know now they Most pretty Dutch much English anyway. I, I I don't. Yeah, they say every in Amsterdam. I never have a problem of someone not knowing English. Oh, everyone speaks at least a little bit of English here. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then speaking of uh, crazy horror fans. Uh, are you one? And what are some of your own favorite horror movies, if you even have any? For a while, sometimes I get into a certain mood. For a while, I was into like Purge. Cause Purge oh, nice. Purge reminds me of uh, the 2000 Death Race. Death Race 2000. It's an old film about car guys that kill people and get points. They run over <laughs> people and get points. <laughs> and they, they have to kill each other it was a remake but there's the real ones with john the guy who was in kung fu john john carradine death race 2000 that was kind of interesting movie um uh got what else the exorcist i can't see ever but it was the scariest movie i ever seen the first one yeah the chainsaw massacre original one scared scared me to death because it looked like a documentary yeah i don't stop in these towns and ask for help uh the other one was jeepers creepers was a really oh, that, that was, was good i knew the director he did powder and and francis ford coppola produced it so i was like well let me see this movie and it was really like horrifically scary the village is good. Is that with a uh, night night something? M yeah, I'm my That guy's that guy always scares me. Anyway, I I well, did you see the latest movie? Growing up or getting older? Yeah, older. Uh, old, They're old. Everybody ages on the beach. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard a lot that, of things about was, it. That was freaky, and uh, but but I I like storyline. And, but I just, I, Friday the 13th, I just didn't dig because it was more like an adrenaline run. Oh, God, killer. Oh, and I go, yeah. <laughs> don't go in there. Don't go in there. No. <laughs> um, hello, is anybody down there? Ah, God. You know, <laughs> yes, I, exactly. It makes no, uh, they became more formulated not to bag on Friday the 13th. Um, but I like scary stuff that has a plot and a story. Nightmare on Elm Street was a psychological thing too, because uh, it's like what dreams may come, Shakespeare. You know what what's going on in your dreams? Can you be killed in the dream? That that really messes you up. Yeah. And uh, but I like um, Jeepers Creepers. Uh, I some movies are. Are manipulated by the soundtrack and the sound effects so those aren't really nice those give me the creeps my you know my skin crawls but uh i would have to say purge was a fun it was a fun movie to enjoy for sure you can kill some you kill a bunch of people overnight <laughs> and then uh i don't know why me and my girlfriend watched it we just sitting there watching it and just laughing i didn't really take it serious i was just cracking up Oh, you shouldn't. <laughs> I just was like, oh, my God, this is like a non-plot. There's no, it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. But sure, okay, I got an hour and a half to. to yeah. <laughs> um, 
Um, I don't I don't see much. You, did you see what lies beneath that one? I didn't. That's with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. What year is it from? Do you? Two mm, thousand something. But even the Minority Report was kind of cool. Oh yeah, because the the dude they're on un, they're uncovering that he murdered the girl. Right. And that that kind of gets creepy you know like good thriller plots are creepy uh but what i haven't seen anything i haven't seen anything lately where i'm very particular about horror horror films it's got to be good i like vampire stuff i always see vampire or uh what was that kate beckinsale she she did all those um werewolf and what's the medium person the werewolf that's a vampire i'm not sure which one well it's it's vampires and werewolves they fight and then they're they mate they they breed they breed and then they get that lichen it's called a lichen okay but i love my favorite uh dracula is dracula from francis ford coppola probably nice and the, the anne rice the anne rice movies um vampire lestat things like that did you uh ever see friday night that's one of my uh favorites. yeah yeah of course with susan Sar uh susan sarandon's ex-husband the vampire what's his name i think so um chris yeah chris chris that's right that, that was really good yeah and it had like it had nightmare on elm street effects it wasn't digital yeah was exactly and uh Yeah, no, I, I do love it. He was next door to a vampire and they were... Right. <laughs> yeah, that's probably my favorite uh, vampire movie if I had to choose one. And Elvira. Elvira was... Everybody was watching her. Oh, right. <laughs> how'd you get... If you're 18, how'd you get involved in it? Like, I, who got you into this? I, I don't know. Like, I always kind of just had a love for movies. Uh, like Marvel movies. Oh, yeah. Um, like when I was six or something, uh, one of my friends showed me the uh, first Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Um, and uh, very quickly after that, I also saw, uh, you know, the Indiana Jones movies, which also has some horror elements, especially as a kid, like the ghosts coming out of the ark and like the oh, faces yeah. melting and stuff like that. If you're six years old, that's... Uh, pretty intense you know so um and yeah then i kind of just got into more violent marvel movies like the punisher and um i also really dug uh sam raimi's dark man from the 90s um, yeah i like i like the first punisher i didn't see the second like the one uh with thomas jane yeah from like 2004 yeah i saw that one yeah yeah i love that one too Yeah, now it seems like movies are just comic book now. Yeah. I think it's a financial thing now. Yeah, especially in, in, in theaters and stuff. I'm just all confused with... Uh, I was following... Uh, God, what's, what's her name? Uh, I was fascinated with her character. Uh, um, she was in The Avengers, and she was the... Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, Scarlett Johansson plays it's Black it's Widow. A Black Widow. I was totally into that. And then I was like, then I got lost. Because <laughs> her dad, her dad makes them and they fight um the bad guy that's out to the original bad Russian that makes them into freaks. And then her and her sister fight evil. Uh and then she ends up joining the Avengers, right? Yeah, I think so. But she dies in the Avengers, Black Widow. Yeah, in the in the last one, the last Avengers movie. Wow. Yeah, I. Uh, and whatever happens to her sister, though? I don't know. Huh. Um, I, I think she only appeared in the um in the in the solo Black Widow movie. You know what? I, you know what movie I like? I watched it again. Is uh, the Accountant? Now that if Ben Affleck takes off with that character. It's incredible. He's like a savant guy, 
like a like a kid who has Asperger and he's amazing with numbers. So the cartel and and mafia people in uh, hire him to basically uh, do accounting work. And and then they and then his normal brother does security work and they end up meeting each other. Right. But his military father didn't want his Asperger child to be weak. So he trained him in, you know, special forces combat weapon and everything. So he's not a weak person. He goes after and just if you try to threaten him, he just wipes you out. But that character that Ben Ben Affleck did, amazing. I'll definitely have to check that one out. I haven't seen yeah. that one. Yeah, check it out. Awesome. Um, and then next question. Uh, here's a bit of a random one. What's the best advice you've ever been given? Um, follow the money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my teacher, he said a couple things. He was like, well, a friend of mine said, uh, say what you mean, mean what you say. That's important. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of flaky people. Hey, hey, let's hang. I miss you. It means nothing. Yeah. There's no commitment at all. I'll call you on Tuesday. Let's set up coffee for Tuesday afternoon. So mean what you say, say what you mean. Um, I never make promises, so don't make promises. And then uh, follow the money is an interesting thing. It may seem like for a personality like mine, it was good. It may seem like it's greedy, but it's not. When someone, uh, you can be tricked in, the, in, in certain, um, so there's people that go after the romance of being a movie star, you know, the, I want fame and you forget everything you forget. But if you follow the money, it for someone that's wanting attention like me, then I want to be a movie star. I want recognition. I want out there acceptance. It's good to just follow the money because you'll just be paying bills and doing well in a very mundane kind of thing. And you won't be worried about the red carpet and, who knows right. who notices you because that's a that's kind of like the that's not a very nice thing when uh you're loved you get all the accolades and then you don't and then then you're you're having the soul search because you got caught up in how much people dig you a really good documentary right now is the kanye west on netflix documentary I haven't seen it, but I heard a lot about it. Fantastic. But those are basically, my buddy also said, take care of yourself so you can take care of others. Don't hurt yourself and don't hurt others. That's really a really good one. Oh, yeah. Like, no one really talks about it. Take caring, taking care of yourself first is the key. Yeah. It's so like, like, um, it's yeah. like the, you can't love yourself. Or you can't love others if you can't love yourself. Right. Same and kind of. When you're on a plane, they tell you put the oxygen on you first and then your kid. Right. Yeah. Because I imagine saving your kid and then you pass out and then you kill yourself. So then nobody saves your kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I would say, yeah, those are those are my. Awesome. Um, and if you ruled the world. What would it look like? Well, you know, power corrupts. I don't know. I, I probably, <laughs> I'd probably corrupt myself somehow in one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody does. Uh, I would say, uh, if how would it look? What was the question again? What would it look like? It really would look exactly how it is now because I like the world. Awesome. But, um, You know, as a kid, I was very, very like, maybe I was a communist when I was a kid, but when I was little, I used to go to this candy store and I used to say, God, I wish everything was free. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know why I make everything free, but there needs, but in this world, you need to have a medium of exchange. 
I, I would I wouldn't change anything. I would keep the world the way it is. I love I and I I would probably I would probably help someone like Elon Musk figure out a, an alternative uh, fuel uh, so that we can enjoy more of the world. And uh, I, I would, yeah, it's very hard to be a, a leader because um, you have, you know, Europe is a great example of every country's different. So how can you be, a, I, I find it to be, if I was a ruler, I'd help every, I would empower everyone to be rulers in their own little area because you can't be one ruler for everything, you know? Oh no. You know, if you go to the Dutch, it's a very different thing. Then you go to Germany. Oh God, that's different. Then when you go, and I like Germans, it's just different. Yeah. Then you go down the street and Switzerland and Switzerland is in three parts. It's French, German, and <laughs> italian yeah that's a whole other world then you go to italy then you go over to france then you know it's like so and then you cross and you go to africa it's a whole other world so i don't i find i find that i find that if i was ruler of the world that'd be very hard you, you'd have to give a, everybody freedom to do what they want to do and uh, not the main thing is don't hurt your neighbor but it goes on. I don't know. I probably wouldn't be a ruler of the world. I probably just, I would just be president of Amsterdam. Right. <laughs> well, nice. <laughs> It'll probably be like a purge everywhere else. Then. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's like uh, everybody's not the same. Not everybody thinks the same. See, it, see uh, if you look at the Dutch, very interesting that I'm learning. Every time I go there, I just learn just the way that they created the water systems. Yeah. And so St. Petersburg is very similar. The Russian guy wanted the same waterworks. And, and that's a different, I mean, I, my friend taught me a lot about it. The Dutch, they gave them nothing and they made a city out of water because th there's nothing there but water. Uh, so then imagine, you know, Germany had to do what it had to do. London, UK, you, you go to the UK, it's completely different. Then you yeah. go to Auckland. I don't know. I, I don't know how I could think like that. That's more like God power. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you'd have to be a completely loving being. And, and every country is a child of yours. You know, I would right. Think. You know, I'll go do what you want. Yeah, but I'm going to start a war. Oh, well. And then let other countries, the, uh, the world is giving uh, the war feedback, you know. So that's kind of interesting today. It, it won't be a dictator anymore. It'll be uh, a different countries saying, hey, that's not cool to do. Yeah. And it won't be one guy anymore. It'll be... Uh, sort of a, a conglomerate of people well it's really interesting to see like on social media with like the current situations of uh ukraine and russia right now mm -hmm. to see how because of a situation like this it, it's yeah r like war is just not of this time anymore and uh the social exactly. media the tweets and the instagram posts everything just shows that the 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 it the feedback is going to probably surprise Putin and the Ukraine people and go, how can we solve this? Because it, it's not going to be through, through bullets anymore. You know, it'll, it'll be through, you know, negotiations or something. I don't know. I, you know, clearly Putin needs, clearly Putin is saying something and he, and he needs to be acknowledged. It needs to be a sit down. We need to sit down and go, Hey, what's going on? Uh, Somebody needs to hug somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's going on. Uh, because those days are over. Yeah. Those days of just rolling into a country. You know, when you look at Europe, it's trying to create some kind of integrity in, in a whole, like a fabric. Yeah. 
And now they're just going right into the fabric and tearing it up. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So that's also intelligence. That's also some consciousness. It's a consciousness changing. You know, it's like we can no longer bully. How do we work? How do we work this out? So, and there's karma too. There's a whole other thing that I don't understand. And I'm, that's why I don't take sides. I just, I have a lot of feeling for my, my Russian friends, you know, and I, I'm not going to say that Putin's a bad man. And I'm not going to say that the Ukraine guy is a bad man. I'm just going to go, Hey man, this was, can we come together here? And, uh, you know, Europe is such a good place. And I just, I wish the best for it because I go to Bulgaria, I go to the Black Sea, I go to Russia. I cannot, I, like my friend once said, I believe in reincarnation. How can I pick sides when I was once a citizen of that country? You right. Know, you know, if you look at, you know, the Dutch, it goes, it's thousand, everything, everything's in Europe is a thousand something years old. At some point, we we came from there. If you know, if if you believe in reincarnation, which I do, and so how can you say, "Oh, I'm not French"? You are French. You were French. You know, I, oh, I'm not African. Well, we came from you know Africa, you know Egypt, Israel. So I can't pick sides. You know. Well, I think it's also great to see, um, you know. Um... And maybe this is kind of part with the whole Black Lives Matter movement. And there's been a lot of awareness about like racism. Um, so I think it's great to see that there are some people that are saying this is not don't blame like the Russians, you know, like as they did in World War Two. It was like, oh, the Germans, you know, and German soldiers that maybe didn't even stand for what happened then got punished for it. You know, nowadays that would not happen uh with you know the russians or the ukrainians so i think that's also good to see yeah i think for america let's clean up our backyard before we tell the russians anything <laughs> uh you know stop killing black people over here you know it's like or, or, or attacking jews or and you know yeah so it's like in some ways we really shouldn't be saying anything <laughs> we need to take care of what we're doing over here right and be a, and be leaders that way demonstrate that we are a civil rights nation that we do care about all cultures and races racism racism because um, americans are everybody and you know i i think i feel that with the dutch when i go to the netherlands everyone's dutch you know what i mean i see indian dutches i see you know immigration of dutches And then there's the white Dutch and this Dutch. Brazil's a similar way. I can't say that um, an America should be that way uh, where everyone's an American. Everyone has that opportunity. There is no, I wish we could not even bring race into it. I wish we could just say, yeah, I'm human. Let's not be. I know, that. right? Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Because the racism also polarizes everything. Yeah. Because to me, I've met Russians. There's a lot of Russians are everything. A lot of Russians are Ukrainians. A lot of Russians are, uh, some Russians that I met are Muslims. You know, they come from different Kazakhstan or um, uh, St. Petersburg or Bernau. There's just di different Russians. It's not always just a blonde, blue eyed dude. So it's, There's dark, oh, there's Asian, uh, like Asian looking Russians that are more from the, the Eastern area of Russia and the Ukrainian people. I mean, so to me, it's like, that's what I love about Europe. I found it to be so mixed, like, like London, it's everyone's in there, like Arabs, you know, uh, Kuwaitis, Qatarians, Iranians, you know what I mean? And, and they got British passports. <laughs> that's what I love. <laughs> That's awesome. So I hope it, it could all be one, one cool. We can be individual because I love, that's what I love about Europe, the individuality of 
hey man, I'm going, I can just get on a train and leave Amsterdam and go to Brussels and it's completely different. Yeah. And then I go to Paris and like, oh my God. So it's like going to Disneyland with different rides. So yeah, I would never want people to change and become we're one people. No, I, I like individuality. I like and I like the Ukrainians. So and so my my finishing thing with that is we in, in my organizations, we always say send love and light to uh, to that situation. Because because a lot of our negativity in the situation doesn't help. Yeah, for sure. So if you're going to be a diplomat, be a diplomat spiritually. I'm going to hold. And what do diplomats go? Hey, let's let's hear each other out. What's going on? What's going on? And then there's differences that aren't unreconcilable. You know, that's why people get divorced. Yeah, they get divorced. They don't just kill. Some people kill each other, but. Well, <laughs> worst case scenario there. <laughs> Did you have to kill her? You could have just divorced her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Block her on social media. That all that help nowadays. <laughs> um, and then final question. If your life was a movie, how would you want it to end? Probably like Cocoon in the pool. And then, you know, you radiate out of the egg and then you float away. Did you see Cocoon? I didn't. Yeah. Oh, you should see Cocoon. The, they find this, these aliens and they keep them in the pool and everybody likes to go swimming in the pool. Okay. They're, they're in eggs. And everyone gets younger every time they swim in the pool. <laughs> so maybe... Uh, that or et or, or or the um the third encounter uh oh yeah those encounters of the third kind i maybe i get on the ship and take off right or i me and jesus walk on water you know muhammad can be in there too i'm not buddha uh so i i think i i want to how would it end uh, i climb to the mountain and i just disappear nice so kind of an ambiguous slash open ending, like anything can happen afterwards. Or I lay in bed and I just blow up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that works too. <laughs> I don't want anybody to be burdened with my body. So maybe I just, uh, I like how Jesus did it. He just took off. Right. They put his body in the tomb and then they couldn't find it. I kind of like that. Let's do that then. Let's aim for that one. <laughs> Just trying to figure and get out. Awesome. Well, is there anything uh, you would like to add to the uh, interview? Anytime you want to uh, rap, Roger, I think you're an amazing kid. And uh, awesome. I don't call you kid, but <laughs> uh, I appreciate you. And uh, thank you so much for reaching out and uh, stay in touch. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Uh, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. And if I'm out in the Netherlands, let's let's hang. We'll do it for sure. And uh, take care of yourself. You guys are leading the world. That's what my friend said. Awesome. So your consciousness and your, um, you know, you put you guys, I see. Oh, what's your favorite platform on, on social media that you use at your age? Um, probably Instagram and YouTube. Got it. So, you know, you guys are the ones that are putting information out that is more to the consciousness of like, hey guys, why can't we get along? And uh, so keep doing that. It certainly will. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, uh, and to everybody watching, thank you and so much me, for watching. Get me, get me to Germany. I want to do signing. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget to send an email to Weekend of Health. Send their, just spam their inbox. And um, hopefully we'll see you in Germany then. Yes.